Get ready for some classic Ramsay badassery, specifically the most brutal eliminations on Hell's Kitchen. That's why she's going back to something she's good at, changing diapers. Ah, well played, Chef Ramsay. Anyway, you have to agree, this chef struggled to live up to her name. Right, lovely. Yes, chef. It's not lovely anymore. It's fucking irritating. To begin with, let's go over her disastrous miss on the fish station. Her first attempt at scallops hit a snag since her stove wasn't turned on, prompting Chef Ramsay to point out the obvious. What are the scallops doing down here? This wasn't hot enough, Chef. I wanted a nice stir on it. It's off. Come on, girl. You can't cook without gas. But instead of just owning up to it, she swiftly shifted the blame onto Tech. Later on, when her sea bass reached the pass, it was embarrassingly raw, earning her yet another scolding from the boss. Sea bass is raw. Lovely. Yes, chef. It's not. It's shit. <laughs> Iconic. But unwilling to accept responsibility, she went as far as to say this. Chef Ramsay, get your eyes checked. Really? Anyway, her second try was way too overcorrected, since it came out as black as coal. In frustration, Chef Ramsay slam dunked it into the trash, leaving Lovely to start over. I didn't ask for black and cod. Yes, yeah, Chef. Dumbo. Again. Then, as a waitress, she took 42 minutes to get her first ticket to the kitchen. Talk about taking the scenic route. 42 minutes to take one order. Imbecile. Sometime later, when she was assigned to the garnish station alongside Ariel, she stumbled right out of the gate. She sent out unseasoned garnishes that quickly caught Chef Ramsay's attention. And, of course, he tore her apart for her laziness. So far, all you've done is turn around, stirred. Turn around and stirred. Fortunately, things improved a little bit when Sabrina stepped in to help. But there was a moment when Chef Ramsay asked Lovely about the next dish, and she couldn't answer. The lamb and the... And... <sighs> yeah, she drew a blank. Now, that seriously didn't go down well with Chef Ramsay. Dude called it like he saw it and called her oblivious. To make matters worse, their team lost, and Chef Ramsay put the blame on the sides, pointing the finger at Lovely's station. Lovely. Beaten by the sides. What a shame. And naturally, she found herself in a very tough spot as Sabrina chose her as the second nominee for elimination, following Tech as the first pick. What's more, during her plea to stay, Chef Ramsay humorously attacked her nonchalance. When was the last time you sweated on service? Despite Lovely's effort to defend herself, Chef Ramsay believed her progress had been insufficient, ultimately leading to her departure from the competition. You might not see it, but it's there. I don't see it. And yeah, he had several valid reasons for her elimination. Like being nominated consecutively three times, her consistently slow performances, and her habit of making excuses. But I'm moving as quickly as I can, Chef. So you were moving so fast that I couldn't see you? Yes. Holy crap! All right, Miss Flash. But here comes possibly the most brutal post-elimination quote I've ever seen. If people were named for their cooking, her name wouldn't be lovely. It would be useless. D-E-S-T-R-O-Y-E-D. -E -E what does that spell? Destroyed. Anyway, I think Natalie's journey in the competition in season nine was promising, and I'm not the only one who anticipated her going further than she did. She was doing really, really well until, well, she wasn't. During the steakhouse double dinner service, things went haywire for her on the meat station. They were cooking the meat. That is what? I, I didn't realize it was that overdone, Chef. First off, she sent out two New York strips, aiming for different doneness levels, but one was way more overcooked than the rest. And well, Chef Ramsay wasn't thrilled. Later, while handling the redo, she was taking her sweet time. As if that wasn't enough, she accidentally started a fire at her station. And in a flash, Chef Ramsay swooped in to put it out, but it was way too late. Stop! That means stop! With five orders still pending, time ran out and the blue kitchen just got shut down. Then she faced a really challenging stint at the fish station during her next service. So I just have to get that wow dinner service in. Wow, 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 wow. The editors really went savage mode here because this is what happened next. Look at that! You got cut one side and what's that? They don't even see it! The ordeal continued as one of her sea bass dishes returned for being excessively dry. Natalie openly admitted to being lost. Yeah, dry, overseer. I just, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. Spiraling further and further into the depths of culinary hell, three more overcooked sea bass dishes returned from the blue diners through James. Every single table on the blue side is complaining about the sea bass tonight. Everybody. Oh, that wasn't a good sign. But Natalie asserted that she was competent in cooking fish, leading Chef Ramsay to accuse her of insinuating that the customers were dishonest. You can't cook fish. I can't cook fish. So the customers are lying. 
Yikes. Eventually, Natalie predictably found herself as the blue team's nominee alongside Elise. In her plea to remain in the competition, she highlighted her talent and the hard work she invested to reach that point. However, Chef Ramsay pointed out the glaring truth. This was her third overall nomination, and there was no longer any room to escape scrutiny. Regrettably, Chef Ramsay made the tough call to eliminate her from the competition, even though Elise, I felt, was way worse. Because, like, obviously. But that consistent underperformance, particularly on the fish station, contributed to this decision. Natalie's decline in performance over time weighed heavily in Chef Ramsay's assessment, ultimately leading to her departure from the competition. But all of them acknowledged her drive. Love the energy, but you are not ready to run BLT Steak, New York. <laughs> Keep your head on, Natalie. Natalie. However, here comes the post-elimination quotes, and believe me, this is peak Chef Ramsay savagery. Natalie was lucky enough to get to see BLT Steak in New York. She may get to see it again as a customer. Brutal. But truly, what happened with Rob in Season 8 was even worse. So, his troubles began when he served up scallops that were, well, raw. They looked like they'd never gone anywhere near heat before. Chef Ramsay wasn't having it, and pushed them to wake up, emphasizing how far behind the red team was compared to the blue team's progress. Rob! Yes, Chef! Wake up! Yes, Chef! Now, Rob's second attempt at scallops also turned out raw, with sous chef Scott suspecting that his pan wasn't hot enough. I've got no fucking color on my scallops! This prompted Chef Ramsay to step in and cook the scallops himself. Things really didn't get any better, as Rob struggled with his halibut, sending a raw one to the pass. Damn it! Let's go! Focus! Sorry, bro, sorry. Quit saying sorry and just go! At this point, Chef Ramsay had had enough. He pulled Rob aside, giving him an ultimatum. You've got five minutes to wake up, otherwise you're history. Ooh, scary stuff. Despite the warnings, Rob managed to get an acceptable halibut out, but the reprieve was short-lived. As Vinny and Russell got booted out from the service, Rob received a final warning. If he messed up again, he'd be out either heading upstairs or out the front door. So, did he take the warning seriously? Get out. Hey, chef, get out. Did I hear that right? Oh, damn. He asked for a clarification. Like, why beard the lion in his den, man? Yeah, I'm pulling out the real ancient proverbs for this mistake. Anyway, Chef Ramsay made it clear that the raw fish was the reason for his ejection. Why? Because the halibut's fucking raw. That's why, Chef Rob. And what Chef Ramsay said next was totally unexpected. If the size of one's waist corresponds to the size of one's talent, then Rob would be a fantastic chef. Instead, he just wears gigantic pants. God damn, that just feels wrong, man. By the way, that wasn't the only merciless elimination quote from season 8. Remember this? When the going gets tough in the kitchen, our chef puts his head down and cooks. All Raj wanted to do was put his head in the freezer. And that's why his stay in Hell's Kitchen was a short one. Yeah, Ramsay's always on fire. But let's skip to the time when Michael manned the garnish station in season 14, but it wasn't smooth sailing for him. I can't carry that level of incompetence. Yes, Chef. Your time is done. Thank you, Chef, for the opportunity. His troubles kicked off when Chef Ramsay and sous chef James caught him neglecting the crucial task of making flatbreads. Millie stepped in the cover, raising eyebrows among the chefs and Chef Ramsay. The frustrated famous chef confronted Michael, scolding him for fixating on organizing his own station rather than paying attention to what was happening around him. You're so keen about getting your stuff ready. How about looking overall? Yes, Chef. I'm okay? Right yeah. As if that wasn't enough, Chef Ramsay spotted Michael carelessly placing a sizzling hot pan on a nearby rack. When Michael attempted to explain, Chef Ramsay's frustration boiled over. No pun intended. Sorry, Chef. What are you doing? It was over here, Chef, burning. Shut up. Can you wait till I fucking finish? Towards the end of the service, despite Nick's plea for an extra minute, Michael sent out his garnishes prematurely. No, no, like, like, I need a, I need a minute, okay? Michael, I said a minute. Fast forward to the elimination round, and Michael was tagged as the blue team's first nominee, while Nick landed as the second. They stood shoulder to shoulder with Mika and Christine from the red team. During his plea to stick around, Michael pitched himself as Chef Ramsay's potential head chef, but Ramsay wasn't having it. You didn't fucking start. That's just it. Well, that sealed the deal for Michael. Aside from his consistent lousy performances, Ramsay pointed out a major safety goof up. Leaving a scorching hot pan unattended under the fish station was a big no no. The pan's about to burst into flames. What'd you do? Sorry, Chef. However, Michael believed that Nick and Adam were the real weak links on the blue team, arguing that his mistake shouldn't have been the sole reason for getting the axe. But that really didn't stop Chef Ramsay from saying this. Fortunately for Michael, he can go back to his job at the senior center. Unfortunately for his residents, it's as the chef. Sick burn, man. Sick burn. 
Up next is the star of the All-Stars, Jared Bobkin. As the Italian night ramped up, Jared found himself swamped with a heap of garnish orders. Feeling overwhelmed, he vented his frustrations, blaming the excessive load for the blue team's struggles. I got pastas, garnishes, polenta, mashed potatoes. I mean, I've got all sorts of There's a ton going on in garnish station. Despite the proteins being ready, he kept calling out inconsistent timings. Three minutes, chef. You just said a minute, man. I'll tell you when to go. That's it. But I need to know your timing to match my fish. 45 seconds. A minute, three minutes, 45 seconds? Which is it, Jared? Make up your damn mind. What do the numbers mean, Jared? Anyway, things took a turn when he called for a medic, claiming that he cut his finger. Upon inspection, there was no visible cut. I mean, obviously he was lying. Won't stop bleeding, chef. Hey, Marino, come here. He's bleeding to death. <laughs> what a massive blowhard. You got a bigger cut on the end of your <laughs> Emergency, emergency. Easily one of the top 10 Chef Ramsay insults. Anyway, when Jared returned after his alleged finger injury, he proudly announced that he was bandaged up without needing stitches. What a hero. But Chef Ramsay wasn't exactly sympathetic. He fired back, telling Jared to toughen up and grow some thicker skin. How many stitches? 17. Zero, Chef. Hey, do me a favor. Yes, Chef. Grow some. The medic also confirmed Ramsay's suspicion, stating that he hadn't seen any cut on Jared. Where was the cut? I'm not sure. I didn't see the cut. Thank you so much. How awkward. After the blue team's loss, Robin confronted Jared about his unnecessary call for a medic, pointing out that he lacked any real injury. You didn't have a cut, babe. I got cut. My towel had blood all over it. I can't help but wonder, though, why did he choose to lie? However, Jared then threw another curveball when he started highlighting the mistakes of others. I mean, Gio and Van got undercooked lamb. I got a girl on fish for getting to drop scallops. Not surprising, in the showdown for elimination, Jared found himself as the blue team's initial pick with Robin following suit. In his plea to remain in the competition, Jared claimed to be a stronger chef compared to Robin. He admitted to feeling lost during that crucial service, but emphasized his vocal presence in past services. But every other night, I have been a vocal voice in the kitchen. Medic! That's the only time I heard you use your voice. <laughs> How true. His entire defense was destroyed by that. Still, Jared vehemently argued that his injury was real, but Chef Ramsay showed him the door anyway. It's visible blood. I'm not going to cook food with blood. It's not sanitary. Clearly, Jared was just putting on an act. As for Chef Ramsay, he usually takes injuries seriously and won't hesitate to send people home for their own well-being. But this time, he saw right through the lie and knew that Jared was faking it. And, of course, Jared had it coming. While Jared's cut was imaginary, now he knows what it really is like to get cut. Oh man, this had me dying. Now, it's time to take a look at Mr. Toilet Brush. First off, LaRoss faced the heat when the steak he served was sent back to the kitchen for being undercooked, right as the blue team shifted to the entrees. Chef Ramsay wasn't pleased and in his classic style, mimicked LaRoss's disappointed expression. Oh, as he's performing for the Oscars. If your fucking cooking was as good as your acting, you'd be talented, you dick. Maybe he was really disappointed, but who knows? However, the night continued to spiral for LaRoss. Another order returned, and Chef Ramsay, along with Jen, confirmed that it was raw. Oh, how can I get down on my knees? Hey, look at me! Is that better? It's raw! Ah, maybe that was a little too much? But to make things even worse, a minor fire erupted on his station, and then yet another steak dish came back. And this is when Chef Ramsay berated LaRoss for jeopardizing the entire operation. Three of them have come back! You're putting your team in the shit! Frustrated and frazzled, Loras openly declared his newfound hatred for the term filet mignon. He went as far as threatening to toss it in someone's face if he ever saw another one. Chef Ramsay, reaching his boiling point, threatened to shut down the entire kitchen if another steak mishap occurred. When Loras finally cooked a perfectly done steak, the unfortunate twist hit. They just left you. They just left. Yeah, the table who had ordered it had already left. Customer's fucking gone. Feeling the weight of disappointment, Loras had some serious regrets. I'm so disappointed in myself right now. This is the first time ever a table walked out of me. Now, if you legitimately felt bad for him here, drop a like down below and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Anyway, post-service, Chef Ramsay singled out Loras, emphasizing that the meat station's disastrous performance was squarely due to his mistakes. Oh, you were screwed by the filet mignon. When it came time for nominations, Petroza took charge, naming LaRoss as his first pick for elimination, followed by Jen as the second choice. In a very surprising turn, Chef Ramsay flipped the script. I'm gonna do something now I've never done before. Okay, now wait for it. 
Chosa. Yes, chef. Who should I send home? What? He gave Petroza the power to make the final call. Now, Laras thought he had previously made an understanding during the deliberations. What gets me the most is if I go home and Jen still stays here. Poison, that's all I gotta say. Petroza, to everyone's surprise, chose Laras to leave over Jen, a decision Chef Ramsay concurred with. But do you really think Petroza made the right decision? Well, I beg to differ. But this contestant's departure resulted in another brutal quote from Chef Ramsay. Lou Ross was never short on energy. He was just short on cooking ability. Well, that certainly wasn't the first time Chef Ramsay made a personal attack. Actually, something similar happened in season 14. At the family night, Mika held down the meat station alongside Monique. While initially managing to send out acceptable entrees, trouble brewed when she sent a raw New York strip loin shortly after. This prompted the red team to scrap and restart the dish. Who cooked I that? I cooked that steak, Chef. We have another one, Chef. As the night progressed, Mika's struggles continued. In an attempt to gauge the doneness of the steak, she sought feedback from her teammates, even though they hated babysitting her. I'm not here to fucking babysit. However, when she eventually sent it out, the steak ended up overcooked, and this was the last straw for Chef Ramsay. Look how well done it is. It's just so basic. Is anyone going to step up and say anything? This is an embarrassment. Now, what happened next was quite expected. Uh, Get out. Get out! Go. Despite being considered by Allison, Mika surprisingly dodged the nomination for elimination. However, her consistent flop performances, especially her major role in the red team's crash and burn exit from the service, tipped the scales against her. Adding to that, her lack of confidence in herself didn't help her case either. Mika, give me your jacket. When it came to her exit interview, she was genuinely surprised and thought it was totally unfair. I don't believe that what happened tonight was fair. Monique did deserve to go home. You know, life isn't fair. Uh, she wasn't wrong though. But it definitely earned her this. You've heard of the saying, the meek shall inherit the earth. The meeker shall not inherit the position as my next head chef. Ah oh, man, Chef Ramsay would have made a great Sunday school preacher in another life. But in season 15's fourth service, all eyes were on Mies. What is it with you in service that you just dwarf into this silence? I don't know, Chef. You don't know? Yikes. Tensions rose when she criticized Jackie, believing Jackie didn't deserve a spot in Chef Ramsay's kitchen because of the pink chicken incident. However, things took a turn when Mies faced her own set of troubles. Mies, how long for the welly uh, garnish? Ugh. Just give me your time, Mies. Communication faltered between Mies and Jackie, causing a disconnect in timing. While Jackie and Ariel managed to bring their dishes to the pass, Mies failed to do the same. Mies, yes, chef. I don't want my guests eating on an installment plan. The situation seriously escalated when Mies sent up mashed potatoes on a tray, which Chef Ramsay found unacceptable. He was furious and gathered the red team into the pantry room, reprimanding them for the sloppy, gooey mess. I've been inside prison and they serve food better than this. Hot damn. In response to the chaos, Chef Ramsay called in the blue team to assist the red team. Eventually, Mies was eliminated that night, and you know what it led to. This. After being nominated three times in a row due to the lack of communication, Mies may want to consider changing her name to Mouse. Moving on to season 16, Aziza took charge of the garnish station on the family night dinner service. She really tried to get ahead by prepping all of her garnishes early, aiming to be on top of the game. However, Chef Ramsay caught wind of her strategy and noticed that she was cooking an excessive amount of garnishes, stacking them away from her station. All these pans are getting further stacked down the stove. And well, Chef Ramsay called her out for the overproduction. It's not needed yet. Despite the initial hiccup, Aziza managed to recover from her garnish mishap, eventually sending them up for Ramsay's approval. However, both teams ended up being labeled as joint losers, leading to the inevitable task of nominating two team members each for elimination. During the team discussions, Shayna pointed fingers at Aziza, claiming that she had the steepest decline in performance. Aziza did own up to being overly enthusiastic at the start, but felt unfairly blamed when others also shared responsibility for the service's shortcomings. But the decision was already made. Ever heard the expression, uh, the lights are on but no one's at home? Yes, Chef. That's how I felt standing by your side. Well, I think she wasn't the worst of the bunch, but she was too nice and too boring for the producers. In my book, Polly should have been the one sent packing. I do not mind waiting! I do when I'm kept waiting for That's raw! But what do you think? Let me know down below. Meanwhile, I don't think she deserved this comment. Aziza has four kids at home. I think they need it more than I do. Unless, of course, they're hungry. Man, that was harsh. 
And now it's time to brace yourselves for the most brutal post-elimination quote by Chef Ramsay. One simple request, who and why, and you make a big fucking song and dance about it. Do you remember Joseph? I just feel like a dog that's been taken off his leash. I'm hungry and I want this and I'm gonna get this. Bro ended up getting in his own way and gave us the most entertaining HK showdown I've ever seen. By the way, did I tell you that he ain't no bitch? You better remember it. So during his second dinner service, Joseph held down the appetizer station alongside Jam. Before the orders started rolling in, he, Kevin, and Van pumped themselves up. We're gonna get this done. We do anything we have to do to make sure we work as a team. As the service unfolded, he recognized Tony's need for Kevin's assistance like the good teammate he was. Tony was so lost, Kevin had to take the fish away from him. Later on, Joseph criticized Andy's inconsistent meat temperatures. If you're sitting there all night long with a meat thermometer on your arm, why are you not checking the chickens? What the fuck is it doing in your arm? Can someone tell Joseph what happened to the other two contestants who were caught using meat thermometers? Some say they never made it out alive. Anyway, the turning point came when Kevin sent out raw halibut. Joseph stepped in, preferring not to end things on a sour note. He attempted to take charge of the fish station, but as confusion arose with multiple members from the blue team trying to cook fish, he tried to defuse the chaos. Oh, we all want to try and take charge. I don't want to take charge. Would you just shut the fuck up for a minute and fucking relax? In an effort to regain control, he loudly urged his teammates to calm down and relax like the leader that he was. You all like chickens right now. Relax. As both kitchens struggled, Chef Ramsay called for shrimp cocktails, but ultimately shut down operations. However, feeling very uneasy about the situation, Joseph made his disappointment clear. Didn't feel good about it, wasn't happy about it. We all look like broken men right there. During the deliberation phase, he seemed particularly reserved, largely staying silent and appearing uncomfortable with his teammates' arguments. Punch you in your face! Now that's how you're gonna go out? You're gonna come at me? What do you wanna do, bro? Then came the infamous question. Who's the first nominee for the men? And Joseph took that personally. They can speak for themselves, but they know who they are. Hey, smart ass. I asked you to tell me. Triggered again, Joseph reluctantly named Tony and Andy as nominees, but continued to voice his dissent, claiming that his team had decided collectively. I know you may be slightly stupid. First nominee and why? First nominee and why? Tony. He knows why. It's pretty unusual to see a Marine defying straight orders. This refusal to follow Chef Ramsay's directive led to a heated confrontation. No peer pressure. We're men. Just, 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 what do you want, a fucking medal? I think he did. After all... I ain't no fucking bitch, Chef. I don't give a fuck. Heard that? He ain't no bitch. He then bossed over and confronted other contestants, insulting and demanding that they stay quiet because, you know, they were all bitches and he wasn't. You want to be an executive chef? Shut yeah? your fucking mouth. And then, of course, it was time for the most iconic moment of the show. You want a fucking jacket? You want to talk some shit? Let's go step outside, motherfucker. Chef Ramsay, in response to Joseph's disrespectful behavior, called out his lack of respect, ultimately ordering him to leave the show. You got no respect. No respect. Now get out. Fuck you. You fucking bitch. Once outside, Joseph delivered a disrespectful exit interview, throwing derogatory remarks towards Chef Ramsay and boasting about his own supposed qualifications. But Joseph wasn't the only one who was an absolute jerk on the show. You have to watch this video right here to see what I'm talking about, though. So go check it out and report back to me when you're done. Anyway, here comes Chef Ramsay's most ruthless post-elimination comment. What an idiot. Total, total shame. All while casually tossing Joseph's jacket like the trash that it was. Can you think of more savage moments from the show? Don't forget to share them in the comments section down below. And if you made it this far, make sure to check out this next video right here since it's way more interesting.